uh, deck profile? Why don't we show your face? Yeah. Okay, all right, there you go. See us, Everyone, Taj. Uh, I got my invite with No Extra Deck Labyrinth uh, at the last Los Angeles Regional for the year, which was on the 9th. Um, I performed pretty okay. Uh, I was X3 by the end of round four, and then I just won six rounds in a row. Um, so yeah, this version of the deck is really optimized for engine only, and resolving a very particular card um, that's in engine with Lord of the Heavenly Sky Prison. So let me just get, get right into it. So I played three Ariana, three Lady, and then three Heavenly. And that's it. So the whole idea is to optimize engine and try to put your opponent in like a boxing match because I'm playing nine floodgates in the main. So the idea is just to have Lady sit on board with like infinite back row and just start swinging like left and right. So that's the idea with this deck. So that's all the monsters I played. Uh, I'll keep Heavenly here to just highlight why um, I play this card as engine, and I think every trap deck should be playing this as engine. Um, yeah, so I'm resolving card of demise with Lord. So if I even if I go second or first, and I have Lord in hand, end phase, I'm always going to be setting this, and I'll never play into thruster talents because I'm activating this in the end phase, and they just miss the window of opportunity to, to activate anything. And as a trap deck with no furniture cards, this card is just straight up a blowout because you're drawing three and then a card for turn. So even after you play all your traps for a turn, you're still getting four cards to your hand, and some. Sometimes those four cards can be just straight up blowouts. Um, the other spell I'm playing is just duality. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, I'm not playing an extra deck, and the whole reason and idea and philosophy where the no extra deck idea came from was simply because during Cash Terror format, the way you would get zone lock for five is if Diabellus. Um, Diabellus? Diab Diabellus? Diab 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 yeah. Whatever the card was, um, it would. It rip something from the extra deck, but if you don't have anything, you won't get blown out. So I kind of took that philosophy and I was like, oh, I wonder what else can be like implied with that and without raising the complexity of the, the play style of the deck. So I just ended up opting into duality. Um, it kind of accomplishes the same thing as prosperity, but just not as impactful. And then having no extra deck actually came up for me during the regional at round 10. Uh, round 10, my opponent uh, attempted to resolve Dogmatica Maximus, and um, they tried to send a card from their extra deck to the grave, and I told them, like, that's an illegal activation in game two, um, because I don't have an extra deck. So we called Judge, he verified, and he found out he couldn't. So no extra deck actually came up randomly because of that. Um, like I had mentioned before, we're just maximizing on engine. So we're playing 3-3-3 three, 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 and then technically also part of engine. So 3 big, 3 welcome, 3 trap trick. Um, again, maximize the engine and the analogy that me and Daniel were um, doing when we were uh, building this deck was a simply you're going to be in a boxing match and your 3,000 attack monsters should be bigger and they can't play through flood hits. So, we wanted to maximize on that. And then as far as what my normal trap was, uh, I played three Daruma, three Ice Dragon's Prison, and then three Terror. Um, we played the trap cards as if they were like Edison, Hero Beat, um, Battle Traps. So the whole purpose of the deck was we're going to have removal and we're going to make sure like Lady has an, a, a window of opportunity to resolve at all times as well as trigger our Ariana when needed. Um, so this was just the removal lineup that we went through. I'll go over siding patterns and how I approach this because I Dragon's Prisons does conflict with one of my floodgates. So I'll go ahead and show uh, siding patterns at the end. And then uh, I'm playing nine floodgates in the main. So triple skill drain, triple rivalry, and triple TC boot. Um, it was kind of decided, like, if we're playing a trap-heavy build, 
uh, you need to open uh, any combination of two, so upping the ratio amount um, and doing the math on it, you have the likelihood of opening any two combination of these um, at like a 66, 7 or 6 something percent, something like that, I don't remember, probably wrong, uh, someone fact check me. But yeah, we opted for these because these are the best floodgates for the format, especially with how big and diverse it is. I would say the weakest uh, floodgate here is probably the, the TC Boo. Um, maybe in the future I'll play Gozen uh, just to cover the Horus matchup, but TC Boo was pretty, pretty great um, overall because once you pair with Rivalry, you put yourself in that boxing match scenario or like late game chess scenario where you're just trying to one for one with your opponent, but because you have Lady that's printing cards, you have Lord printing cards, it's really hard to beat two floodgates and a lady on board. So that's kind of carried me all day, if I'm being quite honest. And then the last card I played for uh, main deck 43 was three strikes. These used to be judgments, but um, as I was playtesting throughout uh, like the last month, month and a half, um, I just kind of realized that main deck main deck judgments weren't working out because we're in a combo heavy format and strike plus a floodgate going second just straight up cracks boards all the time so i took out the judgments and put it in strike and set and i don't regret it at all uh lastly for a side um nice pearly deck so i played three gamma seals three erad three evenly three soul drain and then three judgment so this was my lineup for the whole event every card came into play at some capacity and i wanted to go ahead and show you guys some siding patterns that me and daniel kind of went over so going second it was pretty easy to cut the dualities for the kaijus um simply because they would conflict so why would you play both and have that risk so this is just like one of the siding patterns we had going second and then the other siding pattern we had was that regardless of the how game one went you're taking out the terror roots and you're throwing in the triple erad because the game plan at, for game two and three is to check for blowout cards and if the matchup is in your favor and you kind of know what your opponent's uh, deck does, you're just going to blow up whatever is the strongest. So versus Ontarian, you would call like traps. Uh, versus any of the, the runic decks, you call spells. Any of the Avenger decks, you call spells. Um, mirror matches, uh, you call trap. It actually kind of screwed me over once uh, my first round. But yeah, I wouldn't change anything on this list. I think it performed exactly how I wanted it to. Um, I'm pretty happy with my results. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. This is Tom Swag, swag, swag.